วัฒนธรรมอะไรที่นี่ที่โอนี่วัฒนธรรมการโอนี่คือเวลาเราต้องมาเบิร์นยูสมมติว่าเขาติดเบิร์นยูอะไรเสียงมันต้องมา So we've just, I've just come back from a meeting at the, the house with the, the company that are going to fit our solar system, and um, I'll, I'll just go over just a, a few, a few brief details with that. This, this um, solar video is going to be in two parts. Not because it's a long video; it's not at all it's a short video. It's just that I want to do part two when it's all been installed and it's actually working, and I can, I can show you the. You know what, 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 what your money gets you. But whilst all this is fresh in my mind, I'd like to do a video about it. So. What we've agreed, look, we, we, we've, because of where the house is, we're nowhere near an electric supply. It, it's literally kind of five kilometers to the closest uh, electricity pylon, a pole, the hookup place, you know. So there was never an option to go with an on-grid system. Uh, an on-grid system is much cheaper to install. Uh, it, it, an on-grid system, in my eyes, is a great thing to have in Thailand because you've got, you know, 12 hours of sunlight most days. Whereas, and if you get a few solar panels on your house, it can power everything you need in your own house. And then, as soon as it goes dark, and the solar panels stop working. That's when you switch over to the grid, you know, and uh, it just means that you've got electricity through the night, but you know you're only paying for electricity through PEA, which is the electric company, for the nighttime consumption, and it's great, you know. You know, but in my eyes, that would be a fantastic investment. If we were near a um, electricity supply, that's what we'd be doing 100%. Um, now, unfortunately, we're not. Now, look, it, it, it's got pros and cons. Being in the middle of nowhere, we love the seclusion. We love the fact that we haven't really got neighbours other than people farming the land. We like being in the in the middle of nowhere. That's that's why we bought the land. Uh, and it was reflected in the price because it was not close to electric uh, electric hookup or water. Uh, now, obviously, the downside of that is we have to go with a with a full off grid system, and that's pricier, and uh, it, it comes with all manner of issues unless you're prepared to spend quite a bit of money on it. You, you, you certainly can't do it on the cheap, you know. You, you just can't. Well, look, you can. But you're going to run into problems further down the line. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. You know, this time of year, you do get two or three days on the trot where it's very cloudy and very rainy in Thailand in the, in the northeast. And this monsoon season lasts sort of it's June, July, August, September. So if you have a few days where it's really dark clouds in the sky, then you're going to you can have no electricity, you know, unless. So, so part of the off-grid system that we've got, we've paid a little bit more, but it includes a good quality generator with an automatic kick-in. So it's all hooked up to the system. So as if we have a day, if we have a couple of days where it's very, very cloudy and the, the solar panels are just not working, you know, which again, it's, it's likely to happen at some point. Um, and if the batteries have not got enough juice in them from, you know, the previous day or whatever it might be, then the generator automatically kicks in, it starts. And obviously we have to make sure there's diesel in it, but, um, but that, that, that's, a, that's a minor concern, you know. So, so yeah, so we, we've done that. And um, the cost of that, full system is 460,000 baht which is a, a touch over 10,000 pounds which is it's more than we originally budgeted for we thought we could do it for about 300,000 baht but 
that was that was two years ago when I looked at it. Be before we bought the land, I looked at the cost of an off-grid system, and at the time, you could just about do it for three hundred thousand baht. But that might not have been a particularly good setup. But obviously, since then, we've had huge inflation around the world, haven't we? You know, post-COVID. The price of certain things have just gone through the roof and I think this is partly to do with, with inflation, the, 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 the increase in it. Yeah. And we've gone with a guy who's got a company who's a friend of a friend, you know, which which can take away some, it takes away an element of, of stress um, post completion because it means that, you know, he's local, but also because he's, because he, he's, he's a friend-ish, he's, he's a friend of a close friend of, of ours, uh, a, a Thai guy, he's a lovely chap. So it means we're not so worried about him doing a sort of crappy job and then just disappearing that's not going to happen but also it takes away a little bit of that feeling of am i getting a completely inflated farang quote you know which which ha happens with most things to be honest as soon as they start talking to somebody who's not thai then the price tends to jump up 50 percent or whatever uh, and you know you have to accept that that's just part of being a farang in Thailand. But but I don't think this has. I mean we've we've also gone back and forth. He started off his his quote was a little bit higher than that at first. We've gone back and forth and we've changed some details on it. So so fingers crossed that that will work out. Um, yeah. So. side of our land that we opted not to dig a canal for drainage and you see what's happened the rain's been so heavy I think uh, this is clearly going to have to be done maybe not not during the next couple of months but certainly beyond October ready for next year this will get done we, we sorted the wi-fi problem as well I had, I had a video a few days ago which was sort of talking about like unsolved problems. One of them was solar, you know, we were sort of, we, we realized it was gonna cost almost twice as much as what we'd originally planned, uh, but we've we've sorted that today. Well, we've, we, we haven't sorted it, we've just, we've just bitten the bullet. You know, we just accepted we have to pay that extra bit of money. So it is sorted. Um, but the other one was the Wi-Fi. It's only a small issue, it was with AIS. And we, we, we'd bought, um, We'd bought a router and it cost us 2,400 baht and it was a 4G router. It came with a SIM card and if, with, with, with the year's worth of data on it. And we said, we'd, we'd sort of stressed to the, the sales girl. They said, look, can, can we run everything in our house off of this? And she just sort of said, yeah, yeah, you know, whatever you ran on, whatever you ran off uh, on, on, a, on a, your normal uh, internet service you had previously, you know, TV, iPads, phones, whatever, you can do the same with this. So we, we bought it, we plugged it in. It was very strong Wi-Fi for about five days. It was great. And then it just dropped off. All of our devices were still registering that as the Wi-Fi was there, but there was just no speed. It was literally at zero. So we took it back because we thought, well, there's a problem with this. We took it back to AIS. And then the girl 
explained that you only get X amount of gigabytes of of data per month and then it refreshes for, for 12 months. Now it was quite a lot, I think it was 100 gig per month, which is which is quite a lot, but I, but I think once you factor in Netflix and watching Netflix on like a high quality setting on your television, that takes an awful lot of, of data for streaming. I think, I think if you just watch one movie on Netflix, it takes, it can, it can take, I don't know. Well, like I'd, I'd be guessing at 20 gig, but that's a complete guess. So don't, you don't take that at face value, I'm just guessing. But it, it's obviously a lot because what happened is we used up that 100 gig of monthly allowance within five days and then it was gone. So anyway, so, but okay. So when we bought that router, we thought that is an absolute bargain. 2,400 baht, including a year's data is nothing. It's so cheap. So, but now we've, we've changed the SIM, we've upgraded it to unlimited data and it's costing us an additional 400 baht per month. So when you factor in the cost of the actual router, which was 2,400, it equates to it's like 7,000 baht per year, which is, which is more in line with having a fixed line internet deal. You know, you pay about 600, 700 baht per month for that. So it's, this, it's the same thing. So anyway, we've sorted it, it's super fast. So that's something ticked off, which is great. Okay, I'm gonna wash the car. My God, this car, Right, when, when, when I drive to our farm this time of year, I, we, I don't go every day. And partly it's because the roads are so messy. So uh, the, the, road, the road there, this time of year in the heavy rain, it's horrific. And uh, so I'll clean my car and I think, oh, I want to keep it clean and nice. I want to keep it looking lovely. So I won't go to the farm for a few days because I know this is what happens when I go to the farm. I'll show you now. What, what I should remind myself as well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm sort of focusing on the cost of this solar setup, the fact that it's costing 460,000 bars, and I'm letting that kind of consume the whole thing, really. I'm, you know, and what I should remember is that we won't have an electric bill again after this. Mm -hmm.